Okay, so I have just started the recording. Um, so hello, thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much to Kevin, Matt, Vanessa, and Zizi for being here. Uh, my name is Kimmy King and I am a local theater practitioner here in Kingston. This conversation was created as a companion piece for the grand on-stage presentation of the Chemical Valley Project, which is being live streamed from the first Ontario Performing Arts Center in St. Catharines, Ontario on Friday, November 13th. And as you just said, we're here with Kevin, Vanessa, and Zizi from the Chemical Valley Project. Um, yeah, I just want to say a little bit about the show. The Peace Center is the, ooh, sorry, the Peace Center is the, ooh, why do I keep stuttering over this word? The Amgen, Amgen Wong, yeah. The Amgen Wong First Nations Reserve located in Sarnia, Ontario. Um, and in that city is the Chemical Valley, one of Canada's largest petrochemical corridors. And hopefully our listeners have tuned in to your performance and are listening to this conversation afterwards. So I'm just gonna, I'm not really gonna like reach feel and like say what it is. Um, we're just gonna get into it. Um, I saw the Chemical Valley, I saw the Chemical Valley project in what I believe was April, 2019. Uh, I was so excited to be able to see it. Like I planned my week around it. Uh, but I'm so excited to engage in this conversation here. Uh, the show is meant to support conversations about Canadian environmental policy, treaty rights and indigenous relations and the current nature of Canadian identity and values. And I think these conversations are always pertinent, especially in 2020 after everything that's been happening. Um, yeah, this has been a lot for me. And can we just hear from you all? And if you can tell me a little bit about yourself and your roles in the piece. Sure, I can, I can start. Uh, my name is Kevin Matthew Wong. I'm one of the co-creators with Julia Hauman. Uh, and I am also the performer of the show. Uh, and I was very lucky to meet Vanessa and BZ now four years ago uh, by, by uh, visiting the Toxic Tour, which you would have heard about uh, since you've just seen the show. Um, and uh, also very lucky that our, our friendship started there too. And the show has been um, this interesting document of where we were and then consistently adding on where we are, I feel like, and just slight amendments and, and yeah. But uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, Vanessa and these, any of you, if you want to go. Uh, so, Ani Bojo, Bizi Kari Nishna Kas, Makwan Dodao, Amstrong Donjba, Nishna Bandao, Lenape Ndao, Unaida Ndao, Nishma Nadok Ndao. So, hi, hello, my name is Bizi Gray. Uh, I come from Amjanong, I'm Bear Clan, I'm Anishinaabe, I'm Oneida and Lenape, and I'm also a Two Spirit, so I go by they, them. Um, and currently I just graduated from language school um, and I uh, want to be one of the first like uh, two-spirit language teachers for Anishinaabe Moan uh, and then I also do a lot of cultural revitalization um, in the background as well as um, I was an advocate for um, uh, like a youth advocate I started when I was in uh, grade like eight of school and I started like learning about what Chemical Valley was and then speaking out about it as a like indigenous youth from that area. Um, and so I'm like one of the, I guess you would say like subjects of like the <laughs> uh, play where it's like I um, am in it within interviews and like that kind of thing. Um, it's like really cool how like uh, me and Vanessa have been incorporated into the show. Um, so I would say, yeah, I'm just like, like a character in it, but I don't have, like, I'm not fully like there. It's like, these like historical recordings of me that just like play out of the show. A digital star of the show. <laughs> digital star. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vanessa. Uh, I'm from the Amdenong First Nation. I am Anishinaabe. Uh, and I come from the Bear Clan, um, and I'm BZ's older sister, uh, and we are both uh, grassroots organizers, and we mainly focus around public education of environmental racism, uh, and we speak to our personal experience, um, and we conduct our work in many different ways. Um, and it's a lot of educating. Sometimes we take mm -hmm. um, 
direct action. Um, so there's many different forms that the play touches on. Um, and it's such a long subject to go into, but, and that's something that is almost a burden to me and BZ, where we kind of have to start from the beginning every single time because so many people are unaware of Chemical Valley. Um, but I feel like people have a better understanding of the issue because they went to go see uh, Kevin and Julia's show uh, because it was like an entertaining like way mm. of understanding. And um, usually when me and Beezy go speak about this, this subject um, to like classrooms, um, to events, um, it's like highly emotional for both of us uh, to bring it up again and again. Um, so while it's recorded, it's there's more use out of our time and effort when we do this work. So mm -hmm. we work um, like our our work and Kevin's work is like um, interconnected and in how people actually take in that information. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um... My next question is going to be about, well, I was going to ask you to tell me a little bit about the Chemical Valley and the work that you've been doing as land defenders and water protectors, but I also want to respect what you've just said about how, like, taxing and um, exhausting that it might, like, it is to have to, like, restate that all the time. Um, so I do want to propose it, but also feel free to be like, no, I don't want to talk about that. Like, yeah, it's so fair. Easy, do you want to, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, yeah, so the work kind of like, it's weird where it's like, it was like such a, like, um, like a normal thing in our life was like Chemical mm. Valley, which is like a really high percentage of like, pollution and um, chemical and like, things that we use like, like so often kind of thing, but we never think about where it comes from and what it impacts. Mm and like how like much oil was created and like um really pushed for and used for things like even that can come like so naturally like gum or um like uh what's my thinking candles like waxes that go into like our candles or like even our makeup and mm -hmm. it's like how all these things really shifted to the high demand of oil but um it's really weird coming from like a space like that because um, you don't, you think it's normal, but to other people, you have to point out the kind of things that like are not normal because like, yeah. that's what you grew up with. That's what you live with. And you just kind of like, that's what's available to you. And that's what you understand is reality. Um, and then it was like growing up with it, it was really weird. Cause it's like, we were like evacuated from our homes. Um, like we were told some years not to plant gardens it like completely like for me even it disrupted like a like a connection for even my own like being like of like me trying to be an indigenous youth who like has had like family that had went to like residential school and how um how like I really wanted to find the more cultural aspect of my life but it mm -hmm. created like a huge disruption with where I came from because it's like fishing like we were really big fishermen like where we were from or just like we were very involved with like that like sacred waterway of like the great lakes but in certain points and areas like that like the water was so impacted that it was like known as dangerous to like touch like the Telford Creek that went into the St. Clair River like that was dangerous to touch and so that like interrupted almost like my connection to like water even and like how I saw water or how I like um how I felt like I had a different view but it was interesting where it's like learning back culture and teachings about how all water is still sacred all land is still mm -hmm. sacred but it was like hard to make that connection for a little bit where it's like I'm trying to connect to the land and the water um with through my culture but it was like it felt like really difficult sometimes where it's like that connection felt interrupted so it was even 
like growing up in that way where I was very interested in like my history and my people and like all my different like aspects but not only was there that like and this is still part of colonization but like that impact that it had like even on a young um, indigenous person's life of like environmental racism was like something that I had to face um, as well as like the things that people have to face with colonization of like a grandpa going to residential schools but like that was also interrupted and so I think that really made me like interested in like wanting to learn about the petroleum business and then also mm -hmm. wanting to be someone who felt comfortable enough to talk about it and to really like educate people about like how it impacts like indigenous people and how it's even connected to like a lot of things in Canada, um, but like how like we were never given even that right to say no to a pipeline, but it like mm. came into our community anyway. And now living mm. with it like for years now, it's like, I feel very comfortable with advocating why pipelines are not a good idea for like any community. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Mm. I've been wondering um, that. So I think like I'll just add that um, for me in BZ, it's not much of a choice to do this type of labor. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're part of a generation um, that was given a lot more um, freedom. Um, and space and uh it left us to to like wonder like why is there so many refineries like mm -hmm. next to our homes um like why are daycare kids getting sick and um there's no relief or help or understanding um and it was just so in our face that like, um, like we couldn't help but like talk to each other about it um, and talk to our friends and their community members. And I think like, I just felt as a community member that like a lot is put on our shoulders when it comes to um, our exposure to whatever the companies put out there for us and our environment. And there's just no difference. Like people like talk about us, like we can fit in the category of like anarchists or like um, Antifa and like, there's all these like ways that people try to describe people like us, but we're really just like Anishinaabe people and we have our teachings and we have natural law and we're like we're lucky enough to have that like no thanks to the same government that holds power today mm -hmm. um and so those old connections to those um to those inflicted like uh genocide we're just like we just can't ignore it while there's like flares going off here and there and while well, there's odors in the air um we just like where there's just like nothing holding us back from like being who we are um mm -hmm. bz identifies as two spirit that's a very important part of who, who they are and what their work looks like and i identify as anishinaabe way an, an indigenous anishinaabe woman who is queer and um that's part of like our freedom that probably gives us a bit of strength to like, mm. to do things that are, that seem radical, but are just like common sense to like people mm. like us. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, in the piece about like, like learning freedom and not learning freedom, but in, in finding freedom, um, art is always a means for people to like express themselves and to understand things in a specific way. And I kind of want to pose the question of, um, like, I get, well, one for Kevin, why tell the story in a theatrical form? And then for um, Vanessa and Beezy, like, how has this 
story being told in like in a theater piece how has that like helped or even like benefited you um over the years I know it's a bit loaded <laughs> sure so, so the question of, of why why theater for this mm -hmm. um well I can tell you a bit of a funny story so when we started just having a conversation about, is this even a theater piece? Can the theater even support this mm. cause at all? Uh, Vanessa and I had a conversation uh, where we were, it was so blue sky. It was like, are we writing a play? Are we hiring actors? Is this a bike lock opera? At, at a, at, if you've seen the show, you understand why the bike lock is significant. And it was just like these pie in the sky ideas. And I believe I have a recording where BZ was like, uh, so Kevin, are you going to wear a wig to play Vanessa? You know, and, and what we honed in on was these stories are so present and real and mm -hmm. there's a duty of care around these stories that they belong in Vanessa and BC's voice. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of it was, but then who am I as the storyteller in this, in this, and what's the relation? Mm -hmm. And what the piece demands of me as the storyteller over time is that I learn to understand more about my relationship to this land that, that we call Canada. And it, it, in many myriad of ways uh, in which the breakdown of the show is a scene for which I say, I don't know if I should be doing this. Um, and what, what is my relationship to this work? And uh, I consult with Dr. Jill Carter uh, at the University of Toronto, who's an Ashkenazi an Anishinaabe uh, theater practitioner and professor. And well, you've seen the show and they say, well, you're from a colonized place too. Your family identifies as being from Hong Kong. And that was really made these issues concrete. It, and it, what Dr. Carter gave to me in that exchange was what I'm hoping we're doing for the audience, which is mm. to make these issues concrete. They're not abstractions. Vanessa and BC are real people that are on the mm -hmm. front lines three hours away from Toronto. You know, uh, these are real factories. This is not something in a history book. Um, you know, the, the, the show begins with 410 years ago. Uh, well, it begins with 17,000 years ago, you know, uh, and then it goes to 410 years ago, it, that giant gap of time, you know, uh, before the first Western settlement is established. Um, and it's about making these things not abstract and weaving all these mm -hmm. different threads together. And, and there's a strength in sharing space. There's a power in sharing space. And there's a power in, in, in you know, having a collective energy and spending time together. And, you know, and I was so frustrated as well at just seeing, uh, you know, as uh, Vanessa mentioned, just seeing uh, water protectors being labeled, uh, mislabeled. Uh, or try to fit into a box, but really it's mm -hmm. a different worldview that people need to mm -hmm. understand. Yeah. And it, it, it is common sense. Um, and, and I did not want to see more of uh, the sort of mis misrepresentation of these issues. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, Vanessa, if you wanted to speak on how like the, the theater piece has, um, like how that, like how being part of this has like felt for you almost, yeah. Um, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh no, you go first. <laughs> okay, um, I was just gonna say that um, I had mentioned that it's a, uh, I think it's, like an easier way for people to, to take in all the information that me and BZ usually just throw at people. Like mm -hmm. there's no like lights or anything like that when we talk to like students, like I'm usually the grouchy one just like throwing facts and just like in my own, you know, in my own like way and BZ gently like reminds them that we have our like traditional teachings and like we have we play our own roles in our own way um but it's like I think people in the theater community maybe wouldn't have like sat down for a lecture with mm. BZ and Vanessa <laughs> as much as they were like excited about this new cool show um and 
like so much so that like I don't even think like our own mom would like would sit down in our lecture like she has come to my lecture like maybe once um but it wasn't like a full down low of everything and it was rarely about like me and my work and that's like something I'm not really good at like I don't like to like highlight myself and like what I've done it's kind of like this is the issue this is important like things are just getting worse <laughs> like I'm not good at like talking about my own achievements and Kevin does that very well for um for both me and DZ <laughs> and so um uh my mom came to see the show like our mom me and DZ's mom came to see the show and um she like she loved it and I'm just like <laughs> and I'm sure that so much of the show was actually like news to her like I'm sure she mm. didn't know like us in this light or us in like and all these things that we did um and like and Kevin's so proud and he's so good at keeping your attention and he can like make you really care about things <laughs> and um and that's something that me and BZ like aren't like put don't put that, that extra time and effort into um so it's a really good teamwork um effort and it and it it's really it's really deep when like I can feel like wow like I feel good about myself watching Kevin talk about us and uh and my mom can be like yeah she was arrested for shutting down a pipeline like I get it now like <laughs> so many years later sitting in the Toronto like theater <laughs> so so yeah I think it's actually been good for our family to like for her to be able to see it in a way that I'm not like this alarmist person just like throwing facts at her and she's just like mm. no I don't know what you're saying um so so yeah it's been such an interesting and better way to see see this work and see the story played out thank you uh, I feel like super proud of everyone who is like very like involved with the show in any way that they're like putting efforts into it because it's so like stunning and beautiful and so visually appealing in the way that it's like crazy how it's like even some of our stories are reenacted in a way that's mm -hmm. like how almost like I wish people would view it and understand it which has been like so like feels very like like I feel very seen and very valued kind of thing and like the show has really created like that space and a space that like, I feel like, um, like I don't put enough like time or energy for anything like this to even like mm -hmm. flourish or happen, but people have taken that on and like who understand like so many different aspects of theater and like to see a show like this was like so crazy. And it's even like a story of even I've told of like my mother's bedroom like the bedroom's actually in the show and it's like that's so nice so, like for someone to hear that story like it can be so different because everyone's like different types of learners and so like for people who are more visual or near you need more of like even more hearing aspects like it kind of delivers that and it's mm -hmm. really like unique and I like really enjoy that it's a thing and that and people still want to keep seeing it and that it's like we can never have enough audiences and it could just keep going for as long as it can go kind of thing and it really is like a great way to like educate people even and it covers so many different areas and aspects and I think that's really cool yeah that is super cool um I want to go back on to Kevin's point about like being in space together uh I just want to ask so how is that manifested in like the age of COVID and like having to probably rework the show um to be broadcasted well yeah I can definitely speak to that we just started our first day of rehearsal today which is been very interesting one moment that you will have seen so there, this is not a spoiler uh thing right Kemi is that right people I, have seen the show? I, yeah people have seen it okay people great seen it. <laughs> well one thing that we're doing so there's there's this moment where BC says 
uh, if you have on sale Halloween candy, maybe you could give that out. And so in the theater version that you won't have seen, I chuck candy into the audience. And they were like, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna do that? What's the meaning of that moment of that candy? Mm. And the meaning is, well, the intention was, here's, here's a thing that you can't resist to take. And then there's, there's this important information that's there. How do we do that gesture digital? And so what we're going to do, what you will, will have already seen or what we think we're gonna do is actually send people to a, a special hidden link, probably theater.com slash candy, mm. and then have a digital version of that candy that people will see and then some sort of like the, the digital equivalent of a quick sugar high. So like a very upbeat song that just goes da, 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 da. and then my voice going, uh, okay, you should return to the live stream now. Um, and, and just that it's like, how do we keep that funness and keep yeah. people engaged? And part of the, our uh, pre-show speech is also gonna be, if you have candy at home, uh, have it by you. I won't tell you mm. why, but you'll, you'll understand. And just kind of keeping that funness uh, has been something that that is a big um, thing that we want to keep track of in this digital adaptation because yeah. the piece works as well because there's like this audience connection that is like this trust. Strangely, I have people's trust. I don't know why, but, but I think I do. And, yeah. and, and some of that, you know, is the it's just that that levity. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's yeah. one little thing. The, the rehearsal has me hard. I will say. Um, it's hard to, as we all know, it's really hard to be on Zoom um, all day. And, um, and the piece as well, we're also tracking four different cameras now. So mm -hmm. we're going through the entire script and we're saying this scene probably looks good in camera two and then we'll switch to mm. camera four on this line. So I hope it goes well and I hope you enjoyed it since you've seen the show already. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you enjoy me? I like thoroughly enjoyed like all of it as watching and I want to know what your favorite moments were either within the play as it is slash was um, and in like the creation process. And this is a question out to everybody. Uh, I can, I'll start. Um, favorite moments, it, it switches a lot, but oh, this is very sentimental. Do I want to share a sentimental moment? I get really nervous. Yes. I get really anxious before a show and the moment that I'm grounded in the show is when I say Vanessa and Beezy's names the first time. I just feel that I, I settle into my feet at that moment and, and I know that it's, it's happening and there's a responsibility. And sometimes I feel that like, that's what I'm thinking about when I, um, yeah, when I, when I move into the rest of the piece, yeah. So sweet, yeah. That's so sweet. Oh my goodness. Um, so, um, I I like the aspect I like about the show is that I think when me and BZ do our talks, whether we're together or alone, it feels like we're talking at people, and and we're often the minority in in the room whether it's like people who just oppose of mm. um, the idea of decolonizing mm. or people just don't understand that yet because they have such belief in what it means to be Canadian and yeah. um, it's I think it feels like it takes a lot more energy to to do that um, because we don't feel like there's something coming back at us. Like we don't feel like there's an exchange. It's kind of like we're unloading and we just hope somebody out there somewhere gets even a little part of that. Mm -hmm. And that process of decolonization can take years, whether that even like, can, you know, fully completes at all. Um, and so for us, it's just like a lot of hope. We really hope we're doing all this work so there's an outcome. And that outcome isn't obey the law. <laughs> it's kind of like making people so uncomfortable in the situation we're all in that they have to do something. Like mm -hmm. me and BZ feel all the time. 
because we always feel that discomfort, whether we're in Anjanang or not, our family is still there. And um, like, that's our, that's our home still. That's always going to be our home. Um, so like no Canadian will understand what we go through on a daily basis, but it's nice to at least get some, some like feedback or some not feedback, but like some energy exchange where it's mm-hmm. like, I don't understand where you're coming from, but I understand that there are people responsible for what is going on mm-hmm. and that I have responsibility to do something about it. As comfortable as Canadian living is, it's harmful to, um, to, to believe yourself, but to make other people believe that that's what it is to be Canadian is to be friendly and to like, be just like one big stupid commercial of like what people are supposed to believe. And I think me and BZ are trying to tear that all out and that's shocking for people. And it would be nice if it wasn't just the, the indigenous people in the room making that um, point and making people feel uncomfortable. Like it should be people like Kevin doing it. It should be people like anyone who gets to listen to us talk. Like that's their responsibility that they're taking away from, from seeing us like share what we have to share. Um, so like that's an aspect is like uh, Kevin doesn't tiptoe like and I think we had that understanding when we first met is like like I thrive on uncomfortable Canadians like I need people <laughs> to like not be okay with what they're hearing and to be even mad like mm-hmm. if we can like poke that like that soft Canadian spot that people have like and something flares up then I know that that we're doing what we want to do um mm-hmm. and so yeah I really like that Kevin is never like well that's a little too harsh like he's never said like ah maybe that imagery is not what is friendly enough like I would like he knows BZ knows like I would walk away from any project that is not down for like making Canadians feel uncomfortable (laughs) so like that's been like an easy breezy part of this whole thing is like I can suggest something we can talk about it but it's never like it's too harsh like Mm -hmm. (laughs) bz and kevin are like not the people to say that and like and bz's one to be like we can make it harsher this way and kevin's just like all right (laughs) we can do that (laughs) so it's a good team and no matter like how intense like it is like i think it's gonna if an indigenous person is sitting in the room and isn't from Chemical Valley, but understands that Canada is violent. I think if we're making that Indigenous person feel seen and heard and comfortable, like more comfortable, like that's like what we're doing mm-hmm. while making like, like the Canadian next to this person feel more uncomfortable. Um, like that's the whole point. Oh, I appreciate like these thoughts and memories so much. I feel like my favorite um, like uh, past time of like the show was when we won um, the award and it was like made out of this like stone that they kept trying to highlight. And then afterwards we did like a whole photo shoot and it was like super cute and fun the whole time. Um, but it was really like nice to feel like recognition kind of thing but also like we had like the most bomb photo shoot afterwards and it was very appreciated and I think my favorite memory <laughs> Hydro Stone <laughs> yes <laughs> so fun um, I just have one last question so I just want to check in on like 
what's next? What's happening with um, Broadleaf? What's happening with you all? Like, what's, I, I know that's a question, like, as we don't really know what's going on with COVID, but other than that, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll start really quickly with Broadleaf. There isn't too much to say, and then I'll hand it off to Vanessa and Beezy. Um, we are very lucky to have this engagement at a theater right now, even if it's mm -hmm. digital. Um, and so the only thing that's in our calendar is this, um, you know, and maybe more, more presentations of this digital version if folks are interested in it. Um, and, and, and then our other pivot right now is, can we support more artists that are interested in thinking about climate justice mm -hmm. and thinking about these issues and creating more work? And can we spread um, our kind of dramaturgy into different works. So one, one project that we're very lucky to be associated with is another uh, project that um, will be premiering next year, which is with David Suzuki and Tara Cullis, uh, which is uh, a piece in which they're performing in it. Um, and it asks the question, can people learn to love the planet as much as these two people have learned to love one another? Mm. And um, I guess in, I hope that our contribution is to get people to think more maybe radically is the right word uh, about what their, their politics are in relationship to climate and how uh, performance can hopefully get people to that next step, to that next step of action, to that next step of considering more deeply what these words even mean um, in, in the context of Canada. Yeah. Um, I have been, uh working with the Technoscience Research Unit at the University of Toronto. Um, and we've been researching the companies and the chemicals and health impacts um, from like all of Chemical Valley. And we have a version of our app out now and it's sort of like our first version. Um, and we started off with one company, uh, Imperial Oil, and we listed all the known chemicals that, re that this company releases um, and all the health impacts that come with all those chemicals. Um, and uh, the app is called Pollution Recorder, so you can use the app and uh, record like what is happening around you um, and all this all the questions that like the Ministry of Environment would you know pester community members with like if like they are looking for information and it's always best to like record this information in the moment because it's um, one of those things that like you never know when the ministry is just going to come around like two years after an incident and just ask you all these exact questions and you're mm -hmm. just like well like i'm not even like community members aren't even like paid to like do this type of work that like we're basically doing for the ministry um so the app allows you just to record what you can in the moment and then it's kind of saved to your email and you can send it right to the ministry and so like all the information's there and ready. Uh, the newer version of the app is gonna be released um, by the end of this year, I believe. Um, and so it includes all the companies in Chemical Valley and, um, and all the chemicals and all the health impacts. Um, so it's just kind of like, um, like a, uh, a larger, more intense version of like the initial app right now. So um, that's very exciting. Um, and yeah, that's what's coming up for me. Uh, for me, I feel like it's, um, I'm working on a, a, like a zine or kind of like a learning booklet. Um, in um, me and another artist style um, to kind of teach about Chemical Valley, but it's kind of composing like all the stuff that I've been researching like for years and years and years all about uh, Chemical Valley and kind of putting it in one place and like kind of reaching more people um, who 
um, learn more from like reading and like that kind of style with um, more like artistic drawings and recreation of images. Um, and so that will not be ready for her like this year, uh, hopefully next year. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the work I've been doing. So I'm very excited to like release um, through ASAP the book that's more of um, a toxic tour, but in like more of a, like you can give yourself a tour almost at home. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Yes. It's so cool. Everything sounds so cool. I'm ready to see more of your work. Um, so thank you all so much for being here and like spending this time and sharing this digital space with me. Um, I just want to know if there are any like final thoughts before we end this. Visit AmjanongSolidarity.org. Uh, visit Landed Refinery uh, and download Creation Reporter and look out for that zine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I'm going to stop recording.